Welcome to the workbench and welcome to another episode of Wheels Wings TV. Today we have the latest boxing of Irma Hobby's new 172nd scale Yak 1B. Let's have a look. First, and discounting the clear, only sprue, we've got pretty much an entire airplane. Uh, Arma Hobby are fantastic at cramming entire things onto minimal real estate. Um, I know their new 148 scale PZL P11 kit, that is all on one sprue, which is very impressive. And this kit, nonetheless, beautiful, absolutely beautiful, recessed panel lines and recessed rivets. I mean, even just on this lower wing alone, I mean, a lot of this aircraft was wood, so there's not a lot of surface detail, but where it counts, they've done got recessed and raised rivets on these panels on the lower wing, which is absolutely incredible. Panel lines are super crisp, super sharp, not a hint of a, a round over. They're perfectly square cut. Control surfaces are nice and deep and very nicely done. Very subtle raised ribbing on the control surfaces which for fabric. In some spots here we've actually got a a circle representing like a larger screw head as opposed to just a rivet or the tail and the wing root and a few on the bottom here absolutely gorgeous detail more beautiful beautiful rivets along the side of the cockpit here that one's in those larger fasteners around the engine cowling more rivets on the top of the cowling here and the Shvac cannon, or I guess the UZB 50 cal machine gun, maybe a little basic there, but you could probably at least get that drilled open. Upper wings, just a couple of fuel filler caps and some access points, otherwise pretty much devoid of detail except for the uh, ailerons, which have that nice fabric texture, or I guess not fabric texture, but a nice little raised rib just to differentiate it. Tail planes, once again, quite simple. The wheels are simply unbelievable. Um, whether or not you can make that out, there is actually raised lettering around the circumference of that tire. Like these look better than some resin wheels and probably more crisply. The fact that they can do this in plastic is absolutely impressive. Like, there's people who probably spend half the price of this kit for resin wheels that look this good, and they've got it in the kit. That's that's amazing. Propeller looks good. Maybe just a little bit of flash. Landing gear legs. Nice, big, square locating plugs. So those should lock in nice and securely. A little bit of a stub wing spur. Exhaust stubs are a little basic. They're probably the only the only part of this kit that isn't completely amazing. A little basic, but yeah, you can probably drill those out a little bit or spring for a resin option. A little bit of wheel well detail molded to the upper wing. Cockpit detail molded to the fuselage halves. Here's the other side of those awesome wheels very very nicely done got raised fasteners on the inside of the landing gear covers and recessed ones on the outside instrument panel is basic 
But at least we got some raised bezels and some raised switches or whatever there, so you can slop a decal on that and look okay. Or if you want, spring for a uh, photo etch piece. But at this scale, unless you saw open the canopy, you're probably not going to see too, too much inside. But what you see on the outside is simply amazing and I will be so bold as to say I believe this is probably the single nicest or at least nicely molded model kit I have seen to date like detail wise just surface detail wise I'd say these guys surpass Tamiya Fit wise, um, I can't speak yet, um, but definitely just in the surface detail, these guys have got Tamiya beat in terms of crispness. This is just really, really, if you can't tell that I'm impressed, this, uh, this is beautiful, beautiful molding. Um, the one time these guys did resin and the resin they did was simply amazing and they've been able to carry that quality over to their injection plastic and this is very very nice canopy on the other hand is a little little thick it's got some quite a bit of distortion in the plastic and therefore you've got some lensing basically I wouldn't worry too much about the cockpit because you're not really going to be able to see much of it unless of course you cut open the sliding portion and open the cockpit or otherwise open things up because once you put that on all you're really going to see is shapes and color you're not really going to see the little fine detail bits in the cockpit so this is probably the only place where they could really step up their game is on uh, the clear parts because the rest of the kit is absolutely gorgeous just need to maybe improve their their clear game a little bit Our instructions we've got a nice little historical blurb on the yak one of course the yak one went on to be become the yak three and the yak seven and the yak nine which were some of the finest fighters at least on the uh, soviet side of world war ii i know the uh, especially the yak nines the germans gave those a lot of respect and a lot of space if they could because they were vastly superior to the BF-109. Sprue map, well, one sprue. Decals, color callouts in Hataka, AK real color, life color, ammo, Humbral, Vallejo, Tamiya, etc. Of course, uh, federal standard numbers and Soviet numbers where appropriate so you can always if you there's some other paint brand you like you should be able to match them now they don't give you masks but they do give you full-size templates here so you could slap some Tamiya tape over that and cut out some of your own masks if you want Instructions start in the cockpit, some sidewall, instrument panel, opposite, yeah, that sidewall console, if you can call it that. Soviet aircraft were very rudimentary. It was if you know control stick, instrument panel, throttle, trigger, engine, wings, guns, that, that that's all you need. So you can do some detail painting in here. I wouldn't spend too much time because, like I said, through that canopy, you're not going to see a lot of this. Uh, decking behind the pilot. Pilot's, I guess, backrest. Little cooling vent, I guess. Bottom. 
model. That little stub wing spur goes in. Control column, I guess cockpit floor for lack of a better term. Rudder pedals, pilot seat bucket. So the firewall, upper and lower wings gum together. With a few little insert pieces. Tail wheel, tail wheel doors. Horizontal tail, upper cowling. Exhausts go in. And the outside, which is nice, we can leave those off for later for painting. And it is nice to see that because of all this rivet and fastener detail, Arma decided to do, let's do the top of the cowling as a separate piece so we can preserve all that detail. Um, that's something like Edward with their new P51 Mustang. They did the entire cowling left and right, so you do lose a lot of the detail on top, whereas the old Tamiya P51 Mustang did this as a separate piece. So it's nice to see they're like, you know, you could potentially run into some fit issues, but if preserving a lot of this detail because you can't get these recessed rivets around 90 degrees. So they these guys plan things nicely. Radiator, tub, bath. Look at those beautiful wheels. Of course, you don't see much of them between the door and the leg. Fuselage goes onto the wing. Propeller, the spinner and everything goes in place. Landing gear goes in. It looks like that should be really strong. We've got the nice big lug there and some supporting arms. So those should be nice and strong. And we got gun sight, cockpit canopy, radio antenna, propeller, and we're done with assembly. Paint schemes. We got Major Lugansky, the Ukraine Front, July 1944. And of course, this kit is all various Soviet aces and their personal aircraft. So the typical late war two-tone gray over blue. The big star on the spinner, so that, that'll be that'll be fun to do. We've got a very colorful aircraft by Captain Chuvelyov. Big red nose in the earlier black and green over blue. Major Reshetov, 1944, another gray and blue scheme. And lastly, Major Yeriman, again in black and green. So two, two each of the, the grays and the green schemes, all quite colorful and striking in their own way. Big slogans on the sides of the aircraft. A lot of times these were just used for propaganda purposes, but kind of very iconic. Cool. And decals. So these are printed by TechMod in Poland. And TechMod have gotten a lot better than they used to be. Um, they used to be kind of crap, to be honest. Very... Not so much thick, but I don't know, dry perhaps. Like they, they would, they like to stick right where you put them, and you'd be damned if you could move them again. And if you did move them, they would crack apart. These decals um, work a lot better. I've used some some of these newer Tech Mod decals, and they not quite cartograph, but a lot better than they used to be. Registration is good. Color is good. Might be hard to tell, but these four star, five, sorry, six stars here have a silver border to the red star, not white, and that looks really good. 
tail stripes and stars molded together. All the very fine little writing on the slogans is really nice. It's If I could read Cyrillic, it would be perfectly legible. And two sets of decals for your cockpit. So you got your instrument panel, various little stencils and console detail and whatnot. Not too, too much clear. Maybe a little bit more than some others around some of the larger insignia, but well within reason. So those shouldn't be too problematic. And apparently they did goof something up. So they do give us a supplemental decal. For this one here, number 17. And as far as I can tell, looks like the only difference is the last word here. The last letter here looks like a number three. This one is that sort of squared off A. So I guess a little bit of a typo that kind of missed the sensors. So, but that's Nice attention, like, hey, goofed up, here you go. So, the new Yak One from Arma Hobby. If you can't tell already, I am very, very impressed with this plastic. The surface detail is probably the best I have seen on any kit and that's including the Tamiya P38 which in my opinion is like the best model airplane kit to date period ever end of discussion so another awesome looking little kit from Arma Hobby it's always exciting to see what they're coming out with because they just crank it up to 11 so if you want to see more content like this give us a like hit that subscribe button thank you very much we'll catch you next time